The AMD Radeon HD 7870 GHz Edition is probably one of the best graphics cards for its time. Released back in May of 2012, this $350 graphics card based on the PICCAN architecture with 1280 cores, 2 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, and a bunch of other fancy bits. Here's, here's a, the list. It's got 2.8 billion transistors based on a 28 nanometer process based on the GCN 1.0 architecture, which in my opinion was the building blocks of making AMD what's great today. A lot of the RDNA type of architectures can be honed down to when AMD switched this graphics core next generation uh, architecture found in these early HD 7000 series cards. It was truly a next generation card back in 2012. You were getting such a leap in performance, especially compared to the 6000 series that AMD had previously launched. Even though it launched for $350, you could regularly find these graphics cards on sale for as low as $200, like a year later, making these one of the most bang for your buck graphics cards out there. To put in perspective, it's like getting an RX 6700 or a 7700 for like $200. Or let's adjust that for inflation, which will probably be around $250, which we just don't have in today's market. A lot of these graphics cards are just way too expensive, and which is the main reason why this card received so many awards. It was the sole reason why the, the 7870, in my opinion, was so beloved in the gaming community. But, like I said, that was back in 2012. How does this card, this ancient 12-year-old card, handle games today? Well, what really made me want to do this was I've been getting recommended for custom third-party drivers, uh, specifically the REIDs, uh, the, like the Indonesian drivers, which are extremely popular. And uh, I've been looking to sort of dip my toes into seeing how these things actually perform. So I decided to grab the 7870, and see if there's actually if it can breathe life into a lot of these newer uh, into these older cards so you can play some newer titles installing the graph the drivers was a little bit intimidating at first but once you find the correct uh, graphics package honestly it's just as easy as installing the normal normal drivers uh, there's a bit you know of options and fiddling around with and once again i want to reiterate look at their website look at which card you have and click on the correct version because I missed I messed this up and clicked on the wrong version and I felt like I bricked my my uh, computer you know that was my fault but other than that once you have it installed it really doesn't feel much different than a normal AMD driver which is good uh, but does it actually improve performance in games well I'm gonna start things off easy with CSGO or CS uh, Counter-Strike 2 as this is a very easy to run title and at 1080p low settings we were getting 98 FPS, which is awesome for this card, it's showing that it's still pack a punch. Um, now, unfortunately, with the new with the third-party drivers, I didn't notice much difference. Uh, we got 98 FPS before and 98 FPS afterwards, with uh, with really good 1% uh, and 1 percent lows. And honestly, there really wasn't much difference, and it just felt like this was the limit of the card. Really Moving on to a more demanding game. title, Cyberpunk 2077. When I initially got Cyberpunk, I tested this card and it got horrible performance. Like I'm talking 17 FPS average. And I'm really glad to see here with the, with the two point update and with the mix of, uh, you know, some newer technologies like uh, dynamic resolution, we were able to hit 49 FPS on average with this card, which is amazing to see compared to, like I said, what the initially what the games launched in. Now with the newer, third-party drivers unfortunately we saw a bit of a uh, bit of a hidden FPS um, I would chalk this up to user error or you know I would chalk it up to margin of error but the difference is too big considering that I ran it using the benchmark which is pretty consistent and having a 6 FPS dip definitely you'll notice a difference that's like a 10% uh, that's like over a 10-15% uh, decrease in performance using the newer drivers which is or the third-party drivers, which is a shame because I was hoping to see some improved performance with these drivers. Now next we have technically the latest version as we have the Fallout 4 next generation update, which in my opinion completely broke this game, uh, both with mods and with performance. With a 60 FPS cap, we saw, we saw this, uh, this card reach that cap with both the old and the new drivers. 
uh, really no difference uh, but I do want to note here that with both drivers uh, the game even though we got decent FPS and the game ran actually really really smoothly uh, considering this is the PS4's graphics card and the PS4 version is locked to 30 this is phenomenal performance given the circumstances but however I would like to note that while running these tests the game liked to crash quite often I don't know if that's the next gen update but the game crashed more often than I like with the standard AMD legacy drivers it actually crashed like every two to three minutes which is unfortunate but with the third-party Radeon drivers it actually Thanks, ran ran for a lot longer like I'm talking I got 15 to 20 minute intervals before I started seeing crashes and actually I, had, I was able to play the game for about 30 minutes uh, before then so while it's still not ideal it was crashing less with the newer driver so I'll chalk that up for a win for the third-party drivers <laughs> all right for our last running title we have Need for Speed Unbound uh, this was the last title that I could find that could run this game that I at least owned uh, for the most part and we actually saw pretty decent FPS. 30 might not sound pretty good here, but it was a playable experience at 720p low settings. The new drivers really didn't help, but um, there's no benchmark for this game, so this is de definitely down to margin of error just from me driving in similar places using doing the same thing. Um, you know, getting an average of 32, 31 FPS was pretty decent and pretty on, on par with what I was expecting to see the, uh, as far as performance for this graphics card would go. Now surprisingly, even though this card was released back in 2012, the card has been updated and has been updated to support DirectX 12. Uh, but unfortunately, it's not the fully fledged DirectX 12 as you'll see in newer cards, which it can be problematic with newer DirectX 12 titles as I'll show here in a bit. Now, I was hoping these third-party drivers would fix this issue as games like Starfield and Helldivers can't run due to not meeting minimum requirements. And that's unfortunately due to the fact that even though this card technically supports DirectX 12, it's not the fully fledged version. It's actually a version of DirectX 11.1. Uh, it's like a modified version of that. So unfortunately, even with these newer third-party drivers, uh, you just can't run games like Starfield and Helldivers 2. Uh, which is unfortunate because that would really breathe some new life into this old graphics card but honestly i can't really complain too much considering the age of this graphics card and if you bought one back in the day like back in 2012 2013 2014 you definitely got your money's worth in my opinion as this card can still perform if you're still running you know you still play some older older games anyways thank you so much for watching please give me a five star support if you feel like it and as always, have a nice day. <laughs> Take care now. Bye. Future proof HD 4K video support with stereoscopic 3D gaming.